Hello friends, I am Chandi Charan and you are watching Technological Logic. In your academic life, you might have come across the term programming quite frequently. Like programming a chip, programming a computer, programming a digital circuit, programming a robot, etc. etc. But what exactly is programming? In this video, I will be describing the logic and programming languages with practical illustrations. Continue with me. First of all, to understand the logic of programming language, we have to analyze its development process. When a child is born, its brain is almost blank, without the knowledge of life and its complex situations. God sculpts it with its very basic demands and basic intelligence of seeking food in the form of milk and indication of hunger by crying. This fact can be technically linked to understand the term logic programming. We can say that the child is born with infinite memory storage but with very few basic programs installed into its brain. The seeking of food and water has been permanently compiled into its brain in the form of operating system and the indications to display their hunger in the form of crying is another linked program which is activated during hunger. Through this concept, scientists developed the concept of programming a machine. This, uh, the microchips, digital circuits, hardwares are developed merely by transistors, wires and other electronic components. The hardware is similar to the newborn baby. It's completely blank. While constructing any electromechanical machine, we provide it a body with all its wire like veins of human body, with different micro connections like the nerves of human body, with power supply like the heart of human body, with central processing unit like the brain of human beings, with mechanical moving parts like motors, pistons, shockers, wheels like the arms and legs of human body. And through programming the hardware of the machine, we feed it with artificial intelligence. Coming to the next stage of the newborn baby, continuously and rapidly grows the intelligence of its brain by watching, listening and sensing through different sensory organs like eyes, ears, skin, nose and tongue. Technically speaking, the brain continuously installs new programs to react to new situations. Each new action triggers a new program to be written and compiled in the brain and the program runs to keep reaction as output. Whenever the same uh, event occurs repeatedly, the same program is activated time and again. For example, when the kid touch any or uh, touches any high temperature surface for the first time, his brain does not stop him to do so because no such programs have yet been installed in his brain. But after touching it for the first time, the sensory organ skin provides uh, some sort of pain as input to the brain and the program for not touching it again is automatically written. Now for the second time, the eyes along with other sensory organs triggers the warning program which stops its arms to touch the hot surface again. The same concept can be linked to programming any machine or hardware. But the key difference in brain intelligence programs and machine programs is that the brain itself writes, compiles and runs new programs according to different situations and feedback given by the sensory organs. On the other hand, a computer cannot do a single task by itself. Each and every and even the simple to simplest steps need to be written in the form of special codes understandable to the computer in order to make the computer perform any task. Without the help of human brain, the computer is just like a workless toy. This is the reason why programming languages are indispensable for automation of computers. Up to this part, it is quite clear that any computer needs pre-instructions to perform any task. But the question arises whether the electronic uh, machine can work without programming. Yes, it can, of course work. The early computers were on the side of a big room with vast vacuum tubes and analog circuits. It could also perform basic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and some complex operations. 
then what is the exact importance of programming? That's the most tricky question. Actually, with the flow of time, there have been infinite number of technical advancements. Converting analog electronic circuits to digital circuits is one of the most logical developments. So today's computers are digital in comparison to previous analog computers. Now, to answer the question, we have to see the demerits of analog circuits and advantages of using digital computers. Analog circuits have fixed interconnection among the different analog components and once it is developed for the particular purpose, it cannot be utilized to do some other tasks. In order to use it for some other purpose, you have to completely reconnect each and every analog component, which is highly time consuming, as it is done manually. On the other hand, in a digital circuit or digital computer, there is no fixed connection among millions and trillions of microtransistors. So it is flexible and the transistors can connect to each other in infinite number of ways, that too without manual operation. These are completely automatic through programs. To connect these microtransistors in a special pattern and to activate and deactivate them in a particular way, programming languages are used. So programming is done inside hardwares to specify their special tasks. For example, a microcontroller which is a combination of a central processing unit and a memory can be programmed to work for a fire detector and the same microcontroller can be programmed to perform arithmetic calculations with, with uh, different compilation of different programs. Hence, by writing and compiling different codes in the same chip, we can utilize any digital circuit for different purposes. I hope that the importance of programs is now crystal clear. Now, three different uh, and distinct questions arise here, like how to write the programs in which language the code should be written and how a machine can understand these languages. Well, to understand these high-level concepts, we should again go to the human brain development process and link human intelligence to machine intelligence. A human brain is a highly complex system with infinite memory and processing power. It generates new programs by action-reaction methodology, just like trial and feedback system. For example, suppose any person is unaware of the game cricket and he wishes to learn the game, technically right now there is no cricket software installed into his brain. If we analyze the complete uh, cricket training process, step by step, we can implement the same logic into machines. First of all, the person needs to know all the processes, rules and restrictions of cricket. To do this, he uses either of his two sensory organs, that is eyes or ears. If a coach is teaching him by speaking, the player installs the cricket program in the form of voice frequencies and stores them in neurons. By watching the game, he stores different light frequencies their access and feedback. Finally, uh, in the field, in a practical manner, by utilizing the stored instructions during playing cricket, the player strengthens the clarity of the storage and optimizes the accuracy of playing the cricket game. Now, if the same game, cricket, is to be installed into a robot or computer, all those physical instructions need to be transferred to the robot in the form of electronic currents and voltages as computer has only electronic components and it can only understand high level and low level voltage, high current and low currents. So to install the cricket game, each and every rule, each and every instruction and processes is loaded into the computer memory in the form of high voltage and low voltage. The de uh, to denote the concept uh, mathematically, High voltage is denoted by 1 and low voltage is denoted by 0 which is called the binary system of representation. So the computer can only understand the language of high level uh, sorry high and low voltage that is 1s and 0s. Uh, special patterns are generated which are a combination of 1s and 0s and these are the uh, sequences which a computer can understand. 
there are millions of trillions of logic gates installed into the hardware which is flexible that is they can be connected in infinite number of ways while giving instructions in the form of ones and zeros with different combinations the logic gates are actually connected in a particular way to perform any particular task this is called machine level language but in order to feed the computer uh, the complete rules of cricket there are a requirement of so many numbers of ones and zeros that you cannot imagine and to write them one by one is uh, is the one of the most complex situations so to get rid of this complexity uh, middle level language and high level uh, programming languages have been developed uh, like c c++ java c sharp python etc These languages are human understandable as these are simple English words along with some algorithm and logic. So in order to represent the human logic in the form of codes we apply some logical mathematical connection which are called programming languages. But the computer cannot understand these languages. That's why the compiler is used for So the compiler converts these high-level, human-level, uh, uh, human-understandable languages into machine-understandable languages, that is, combination of ones and zeros, or technically say, uh, combination of high voltage and low voltage are generated uh, through compilers. After compiling the programs, the compiler generates ones and zeros, and these are fed to the logic gates. going beyond the depth actually these different voltage combinations are given to the millions and trillions of transistors available inside the hardware according to these voltage labels some transistors are active and some others are inactive now when we give any input to the computer it can process it and by combination of voltage labels and provide output in another combination of voltage labels these output voltages are then converted into ones and zeros and finally into human understandable languages hence this was my basic analysis of the concept of programming languages i hope you might have understood that exactly uh, what exactly is programming and how it works inside our machine or hardware for further detailed videos on programming languages and many technical videos subscribe to my channel technological logic thank you